everyone. My name is Victor Lott. I'm the CEO of RE Technology, and I'm very grateful for your attendance today. Uh, where we have a tremendous presentation that is going to happen here from our friends at Delta Media and a number of real estate brokerages who are using their application. As as you know, if you've attended a, a an RE Techinar before, we always try to uh, invite people that are that are doing great things for real estate agents, brokers, and this is this is probably one of the best webinars that we've we've ever we've ever produced. Um, Delta Media Group is a company that is sort of grown out a, a little bit of a family business that's been in real estate for a long, long time, and uh, the the tools and solutions they use uh, have been developed to really support real estate agents, brokerages, and teams in the best possible way uh, for all of their technology needs. So you're going to see stuff here that is sort of like an all-in-one broker technology solution or team technology solution. So um, with that, let's uh, let's move on to the next slide and let's talk about uh, who our panelists are today. So we've, we've always believed at RE Technology that the very best way to learn about a technology solution, um, you know, no deference to, to Mike or John Blood, but um, is to hear from their customers. So we have uh, people who operate web services and are responsible for this technology and the companies that they work for. Um, uh, I welcome Cindy Cook, who's one of our panelists. She's the director of marketing for Remax in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. Hello, Cindy. And uh, I also want to introduce uh, Suvi. And, and I'm, I, I screwed this up when we were doing our test, but Stepanovich who is the e-business coordinator for Cutler Real Estate. Did I get that right, Susie? You sure did. Yay. And then we also uh, welcome um, Karina Decker, who is uh, from Wagner Realty. So uh, just to kind of get started here, uh, we'll start with Karina. But Karina, tell us a little bit about your company, um, you know, how many agents, uh, how many listings, that kind of stuff. But you know, one of the things that people like to understand when they're looking at a technology solution is, you know, does this technology solution fit my business? So, Karina, we'll start with you, and then we'll go with Susie and then Cindy. So, right to left. Okay. Well, thank you, and it is a privilege to be here in this webinar. I'm, as you said, with Wagner Realty. We're here on the Gulf Coast of sunny Florida. Um, Wagner Realty has been here since 1939, so we're one of the oldest and largest independent companies serving Tampa Bay, and uh, that includes Manatee, Sarasota counties. We have 10 branch offices, 12 rental offices, and more than 200 agents. Um, I've been in marketing and web management for about 15 years. I have a bachelor's degree in technology. But of course, with technology, things change so fast that most of what we learn, I think we learn on the go. Um, I've been the web manager here at Wagner for about five years. And when I first joined, uh, our website had been done by a web company with limited knowledge of real estate. And we learned the hard way that we really needed to partner with a company that had a better understanding of not only real estate, but marketing, search engines, lead generation, contact management, uh, email, social media. There's just a lot when it comes to getting these agents up and running and getting them online. So a couple years ago, Dave Eckel, the CEO of our company, uh, met Jonathan Blood from Delta Media Group at a trade show. And he knew almost instantly that what they had is what we needed and that they would become our strategic business partner. We've been with them now for about a year. So I think that, from what I understand, we're considered one of the new kids on the block. Um, but we have been just thrilled with what we have received um, with the Delta platform. And our agents just rave. So, Again, it's a privilege to be here, and I'll be happy to share any information or answer any questions. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much, Karina. Uh, Susie, let's uh, let's hear a little bit about Cutler Real Estate and, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, I'm Susie Stepanovich with Cutler Real Estate. I serve as the ELE coordinator as well as the customer service representative for our online customers. We are from Canton, Ohio, and service the Akron, Canton, Columbus. And Cincinnati market. We also utilize five MLSs. We have over and 300. Many, oh, there you I'm go. sorry. Thanks. No, I was just <laughs> we have over 350 here. agents, 25 offices. Um, and we chose Delta Media Group approximately 19 years ago. 
And I think more importantly than why we chose them initially is that we continue to choose them year after year. Delta Media Group is willing to adapt their technology to suit our business model, and I believe they're true partners when it comes to moving forward and servicing our customers. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Susie. And Cindy, what's your story? Um, hi, y'all. Um, we're here at REMAX DFW in Dallas, Texas. We're a full-service brokerage, residential, commercial, property management. Um, we have divisions for mortgage, insurance, and relocation as well. Um, over 350 agents, uh, seven offices, including our downtown Dallas location and northwest Dallas suburbs. Uh, last year, we did about 4,900 transactions with a sales volume of $1.6 billion. Um, and one of the reasons uh, we chose Delta Media is actually uh, our broker and owner, Mark Wolf, uh, met Jonathan at a trade show and uh, asked me to meet with him to see if we could uh, develop a partnership. And um, that was nearly 10 years ago, or actually over 10 years ago. And uh, since then, it's been wonderful. And one of the reasons is Delta Media understands real estate. And they're not shy about uh, trying to develop uh, items to meet their customers' needs and uh, to push the envelope when needed. Um, our agents are salespeople, not website developers. So the partnership with Delta allows that to remain true by providing um, Remax DFW with the tools for our agents to automate their online marketing and handle leads quickly and efficiently while in the field. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Cindy. That's a wonderful introduction, and uh, it's great to have, we we sort of have uh, way of Florida, Texas, and Ohio. Um, covered here today, and and with that, I, I want to introduce Jonathan Blood. So he's one of our panelists and uh, and one of the owners at Delta Media Group. So Jonathan, are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. And I why are you people. doing this stuff? This is crazy. Well, what I'm not, <laughs> what I'm not at trade shows, obviously. <laughs> <I'm Yeah. laughs> hey, but no, we got some great customers, and we're glad to share um, how how uh, we help our customers do more business. Excellent. And uh, Mike Menard, are you with us today? Are you are you there? Can we hear your voice? Yep, I'm here too. And um, yeah, Jonathan and I were kind of chuckling because uh, he gets the privilege of going to the trade shows, and I get the privilege of you know I, I enjoy the technology and the programming system side, and and uh, obviously Jonathan's a a good person at trade shows and good good sales <laughs> through here, so good business partner. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I I would add that uh, you know Mike is the geek, even though he you know he has the face of the of the the front man. But uh, Jonathan, you do a great job uh, out there networking within the community, and you and your family have been part of this business and this industry for a long time, and I, I, it's none of it's lost on me. So anyway, that's our panel today. Uh, thank you very much. If we want to advance to the next slide, or just kind of provide you an overview of uh, what we're going to be accomplishing, and uh, we certainly appreciate all the attendance. Um, so we'll just there you go. So we're going to look at um, what I believe are some of the most important components of real estate technology, and, and I just want to take a quick poll here and understand from uh, our participants today, like what the key areas are of your business today. So uh, if you could, I mean, CRM or customer relationship management is something that brokers are really trying to accomplish, and teams are trying to accomplish. I mean in so many ways, um, a lot of agents sort of come from a place where we're lucky to have, if they have the contact information of their customers on their phone. Uh, search engine optimization is one of these elusive categories of technology. It's, it's something that nobody really knows about. We just try to do the best possible thing, and hopefully when somebody's looking for an agent, for a property, or for a company, that you appear uh, nicely in search, so you know, click that button if you think it's important to you. Lead management is one of the very complexing things. I mean, you heard from Susie and Karina and Cindy that you know, in in most of these cases, they have a few hundred agents, and whether you're operating a team or you're operating um, an enterprise organization, how you distribute leads and your process for them and 
uh, how agents accept them, uh, whether it's uh, in the field or in the office, and chat and all those other things are, are really important. Uh, you guys invest a tremendous amount of money in driving consumers to engage with your agents and, and how, how they engage and how they follow up and how they incubate those customers uh, over time is a very sincere process and it's very difficult to accomplish. Um, mobile is, you know, I, I think this year was the first year that brokers that we, we study have indicated that more than half of their audience comes from a mobile device, which is pretty significant because, you know, four or five years ago, nobody would ever even think of looking at real estate information on a mobile device because it was just tragically slow and the experience was horrid. But uh, today it's working pretty well. And then email marketing is, you know, one of these, you know, it's, a, it's kind of a legacy technology, but it's extremely effective. I um, was talking to a broker yesterday from Fox and Roach, and uh, their email marketing is getting a 50% open rate uh, for some specific content that they're sending out to consumers that they want to stay in touch with. So um, just quick, uh, there we go. So our, uh, our poll is done. It looks like CRM is important. Lead management is important. Uh, you guys can see um, the order in which these things are critical to the successful operation of a real estate brokerage today. So uh, fascinating. So let's go back to um, our presentation. And oh, this is a cool experience. Great, and we'll just flip to the next piece. So um, with that, I, I just want to pass pass the uh, controls over to Jonathan and to Mike. And if you guys want to just uh, kind of begin, what the the way the process is going to work here today is that these guys are going to kind of talk about the strategy that brokerages are deploying using their platform. So they're going to. They're going to talk a little bit about features, and then Susie and Karina and Cindy are going to kind of weigh in on the effectiveness of these tools. Um, so that, and with that, I'll uh, I'll let you go after it. Well, hello everybody, and uh, before we get into kind of the meat of the topics where we have the panelists sharing with all of you, um, you know their their information and their experiences. Jonathan and I want to talk through something. This is something that I'm pretty passionate about and um, something that I'll speak on quite often, but it's something that, that Google has put out there that their, their slang is, is ZMOT, Z-M-O-T, but it's really for zero moment of truth. And the whole concept there that Google puts out is that there's no sales funnel anymore. And, and again, they're talking at a high level, and they're just saying that consumer behavior has dramatically changed, and technology has affected how that behavior has changed. And I, I think one of the best ways to think about this is just thinking through some of the everyday things that you do. And, and one example I'll give is, and this will seem like a really weird example, but is a hard-boiled egg cooker. So my wife wanted to get a hard-boiled egg cooker, and, and I know very little about hard-boiled egg cookers. Uh, I mean, I've never bought one. And, it's, and, and so what do you do when you go to buy one? Um, what well, used to be, if, if it was 10 years ago, you would go to the store, go find something, you'd maybe ask some friends, but you go find something and buy it. Well, well today, I, I hopped on the phone and was able to search for hard-boiled egg cookers, read reviews, then for those of you that are on Amazon, will know what I'm talking about, hop over to Amazon, um, and I, I see, okay, well, what's the most popular egg cookers that they sell? And I, you know, I find it and I read their reviews. Um, and then I actually watched some YouTube videos on people that have used these different hard-boiled egg cookers. And within a matter of about five to seven minutes, I had my order placed online for a hard-boiled egg cooker that was going to show up at my door in two days. You know, and, and that's a great example of what Google talks about when they talk about zero moment of truth. And, and one thing that, that I want to mention, too, is we're going to mention a lot of different resources and different things in here. All of you will receive an email with links to the different resources that we're talking about so that you can see these. Um, if you could go to the next slide. So when we talk about zero moment of truth, I, I kind of want to put this in um, kind of real estate terms for us. And you know, we all know that, that real estate, the way that people sell real estate and the way that people buy real estate, and I'm not talking about the transaction itself. I'm talking about that whole process that is involved has changed. And I know, Jonathan, you're out on the field a lot, and, and you, you have these conversations with how, 
how it's changed. But what are you seeing with, with what's shared with you from the real estate perspective? How's the behavior changing? And, and this is good stuff because zero moment of truth, I think, sets the, the scientific reasoning behind it. But what we are seeing, um, and the, actually it's what everyone on the call is seeing already, is I know users are coming to my site, but I don't understand what percentage is mobile traffic, and mobile has to be a priority. Um, I know I need video, but I don't know how to do video. Um, and is that another vendor? So ag again, what we're seeing is different silos of technology that we know we need, but the complicated part is I have to get four or five different vendors or people involved uh, to solve that or to, to solve my, my problem. So that's what I'm hearing out there is that, that there's got there's a need for integration uh, to support, um, and I'll just say the Zmot theory of, of how people are searching. Yeah, and it used to be too that that it was, you know, in comparison, it was simple to today. You know, you think about today, there are so many different channels on how people can connect, uh, whether it be through video, through web, um, you know, through all these through reviews, through all these different channels. Uh, we have chat, we have text messaging. Um, again, we can do a big long list, but really, what it comes down to is how the technology that we deploy, and even the marketing, and I kind of lump that into technology now, but how the technology we deploy engages consumers. And we have another poll set up, if we could go ahead and throw that up there. We have another poll where really we kind of want to ask you, do you think your technology, so what you're doing currently in your business or your, or your firm's business, is it engaging consumers in all the channels that it should be? Um, um, while, while the poll is running, can you talk to us about like a list of what you call a channel? Yeah, so, so when we talk about channels, uh, from a marketing perspective, you look at different areas that people will react. So we like to think of channels such as email marketing, such as social media, and we're talking integrated channels, not, you know, are you on Facebook? That's a whole different question. Um, so it's, it's email marketing, it's social media, it's um, paid advertising that you're doing. It is still, you know, your traditional things to do. So your yard signs or your print advertising that you may be doing. Um, even flyers or postcards, is that integrated into your business? Um, when it comes to, and we're going to talk about this in, in quite detail, but when it comes to your web, you know, not just websites, but what about, you know, mobile and mobile apps and, and that whole ecosystem. So it's, it's really that big umbrella, but also, you know, chat and text messages, uh, cell phone, and we could go on and on, Victor, but that, it's kind of that big umbrella, all those different channels. Yeah, it's, it, this is kind of a nice opportunity, um, you know, to, to take a litmus test of, like, what are, what are the aspirations and goals of people that are running enterprise brokerages? Right. Um, and, uh, you know, clearly, I, I, I believe that the sentiment well, it's illustrated here, you know, the sentiment is, is today and always has been that uh, we can always do better. So um, some of the things that we're going to talk about today, and I, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, I know that in, in the case of uh, Susie at Cutler and Karina at Wagner and Cindy in, in Dallas-Fort Worth, these guys are running, they're operating businesses in highly competitive marketplaces and they're having a t tremendous amount of success and they're growing their companies. And you're an excellent partner to them, and, and you guys support them at communicating, to, helping the agents communicate to consumers in a variety of ways. So, with, so with that, let's uh, let's just let's just carry on. Yeah. So let's go in. So we're going to talk through really five key topics right now, and so so the five topics we're going to go over is mobile, video, chat, reviews, and social and content marketing. So if you could go to the next slide, we'll hop right into to mobile. And I, I want to talk about mobile for a minute. It's uh, we're going to have two different graphs to illustrate this. Uh, but Victor had already mentioned that um, you know we're seeing that shift in in mobile traffic. And so on this graph right now, let me explain what this graph shows. This graph shows the, the blue uh, you know traffic trending over basically a five year period, um, where you have the blue graph representing. Uh, people coming to a website using their tablet, such, such as an iPad or a similar tablet. Um, the green representing um, mobile phones, so like an Android phone or an iPhone. And then the, the yellow representing people on what, what are called desktop sessions or desktop computers, which would include laptops, so a traditional computer as we would think of that. 
Um, but this shows the trending, and this is a stacked graph. But one thing that I want to talk about is that historically, any of you that have been involved in designing a website at all, you typically design it for the desktop, and then, you know, if it was recently, you think about how it looked on a tablet, and then how it looks on mobile. That's kind of the, you know, the order of priority almost. And what Victor said, I, I think the next slide illustrates very, very well. What we did is we took that traffic and instead of having it stacked, we, we put them on top of each other. So where you can see this, where you can see that the green, which represents mobile sessions, is, is outpacing everything else at this point. So at, at, as of today, actually as of really in July is when the shift really happened. And these are high-level statistics you know, from, from a bunch of websites averaged out. And, and what we see is that the vast majority of visitors are coming on their smartphones, um, and then you know then there's the desktop computers and then tablets, and I, I think that um, so we have I, I know Susie you guys are going through you know redesign recently and it's it's hard to shift that thinking, where really what our thinking should be, is is mobile first, you know. Okay. And, and Most definitely, Mike. Um, I know we noticed that our mobile and our tablet traffic, we put that together, um, and it's representing 57% of our total traffic, which is a 72% increase over last year. So we cannot ignore mobile. Yeah, and, there, and, there's, and really, here's you want to hear some crazy statistics. When you think about smartphones, one out of seven people on this earth, I mean, we're not talking just America, but one out of seven people on this earth have a smartphone. And, and I really appreciate, um, you know, those, you know, to me, they're those geek presentations that I enjoy, but where you see this, this person in front of a grass hut in the middle of nowhere on their smartphone, and they don't even have electricity or running water, but they have a smartphone. And that's the reality of, you know, of where things are today. And, you know, and as we think through our businesses and, and how we look at things, when we sit down and analyze our business, it should be on mobile first. Okay, what is the experience on mobile? And and that's again, that's something that that's hard to do. But when you think through mobile, really, it goes even beyond the design itself. So we're always big on the conversions that you get, and uh, you know the quality of those conversions. And mobile is very different. Um, so, and I, I know, Susie, I don't mean to be picking on you, but the, the next slide here I think shows um, something that we've been talking through quite a bit as we're going through this, and, and that is the behavior is a little bit different on mobile as far as engagements go. Um, yeah, that's right, and, and this is an area that every time I look at the analytics, I, can, I keep forgetting to look at the click to text and the click to call. Those are conversions, even if they aren't even if I don't see their names or the email addresses or what have you, but they, it is a true conversion. Yeah, and, and when, we, you know, when we talk about mobile, um, we're actually seeing this, this behavioral pattern that you can have even mobile optimized forms that are very easy to use to ask a question, to schedule a showing, but the, the reality is um, a large number of mobile website visitors and mobile app users prefer to just tap a mobile a, a phone number on their mobile device and call you immediately. And in this case here, it's to the tune of nearly 600 calls uh, um, per month, you know, coming off of a, a mobile web presence. So again, you, you, when you think through how people engage, it is very different when it's on mobile. Yeah, you'll still have the same engagement points, um, but, it, but again, it's different. And, and what drove us to look at this a few years ago is we started seeing a pattern where people weren't doing as many showing requests or emailing as many questions from their mobile device, um, you know, but we knew there had to be something there, and there was, and it was they would rather actually just call. Um, so again, just very interesting behavior. Um, can we go to the next slide? Uh, the, the next section that we wanted to talk about, or next topic, is um, you know, listing videos themselves. And, you know, here's just a screenshot showing listing videos. But, Jonathan, why don't you, I guess, kind of touch on, you know, listing videos. I know you run into this quite a bit going out in the field and, um, you know, how listing videos are used. Um, 
or leverage? What's the approach? Sure, and I think there's two ways to, to look at listing videos. Is The answer could be, yes, I'm doing them, but I'm doing them as a virtual tour. Um, or does listing videos mean I need to go hire someone to go out and shoot the video of my, my listing, and then I got to produce that video, and that's you know extremely um, time and you know it's a time and money resource uh, just to do that. And then there's also um, just the strategy of content because the users crave the video, and are you using it on third party or is it back on your site? And how are you presenting video um, back to your users? I think one of the amazing stats that we've seen recently back to you know the the, the billions of people on Earth is that uh, YouTube and, and how there's a segment of users out there that do their property search right on YouTube. Now, that's not how I would prefer to look for homes uh, if I was in the process, but believe it or not, there is a demographic out there that YouTube is a search engine. So I, I think this is evolving very quickly and is very important uh, as an integrated strategy. Yeah, and you have to think through the user experience as well. So as you start tying pieces together, you know, as you know, we just talked about mobile. You know, so I'm sitting in front of a house and I want to see the house. You know, it used to be I would just use the yard sign and try and call and you know years ago I'd have to get a showing. You know, but today, you know, I'm on my smartphone with GPS, I can, you know, especially if I'm already connected with a real estate company, I pull up their app and I'm immediately seeing that house. As a matter of fact, I'm watching a video seeing the interior of that house. Um, you know, that is a pattern and a behavior that is, you know, that is seen today um, that, that's happening. And, you, you know, for these, uh, here, if you go to the next slide as well, when you start thinking through video, Jonathan touched on this, um, you know, a lot of this has to do with the demographics of the users and, and what they're looking for. Um, but when we talk through video, there's, and you won't really, I don't know if you can read uh what's underneath of these, but really there's two trust, two main trusted sources, and that is YouTube, and in this study that was done was brokerage websites was number two. You know, so those are the two most trusted resources um, for, for video. And um, we have a number, uh, a number of the ladies on this call are using, you know, video right now. And, you know, so if you guys could share what you're seeing, you know, with the video engagement, um, Well, my Karina with Wagner, and um, I know for us, video is hugely important. And one of the things we find, of course, visitors to the website, um, I, I, we as a people tend to have gotten a little bit lazy, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but we'd much rather just watch the video than read. And our agents um, have very diverse skill set in technology, and they all have their own websites through this platform. So it's really important for us as brokers, as a broker, that our agents are able to add video to those websites easily and quickly. And we have found um, on the, this DeltaNet platform that it's just a few clicks from YouTube to have, actually have it embedded on the agent's sites. And when we teach them how to look at their statistics that are provided, they can very clearly see that the pages on their websites that include the video are much more viewed than the pages that don't. And obviously, it increases their time on site, which helps them in their search engine rankings. So for us, the video has become a really important component. But the fact that it's easy to use is probably the most important, because if it wasn't easy to add to their site, they probably wouldn't do it. So we're grateful for that. Yeah, Karina, I, I, I would just add to that. We've we've seen a monumental shift in the role that video plays in real estate. I mean, before it virtual tours and and then all, you know, and then as virtual tours kind of expanded into video, um, it went from something that was kind of candy you gave to sellers, like, oh, I'm going to do a single you know a single listing website for your house, and I'm going to do a virtual tour, and I'm going to do a video, and those were all sort of seller benefits that got very little attention from the consumer and now that that has completely changed so consumers are looking at videos and they're trying to have a more um, engaged experience and information much in the same way that they watch TV they can now sort of look at a property and see a video of that property it's, it's, it's really monumentally shifted the way that consumers are looking for homes today so I agree for completely and um, you know the listing videos you've given us the flexibility 
to um, some of the MLSs limits you to just the you know the slideshow videos that are there. But with the back end of the Delta Net, we're able to upload all of our own listing videos. So that's really beneficial because they can be branded. Um, so you know we have found a lot of value in that. Hey, for the sake of time, could we go ahead and forward uh, two slides? One last thing that I want to mention um, about videos is um, is demographics. I, I know that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of you are looking for ways to engage uh, with the the home buyers, um, especially the in the say 25 to 30 um, 30 year, you know so first time home buyers. Uh, and the majority of the consumption of videos is being done by that age bracket. So it's the under 34 or under 35 bracket is the one that's really consuming videos. Um, you know, so again, just how they prefer to, to find those uh, information on properties. Um, let's go ahead and hop into reviews on the next slide. Reviews are really important to the business. And um, I, I don't know why I have to, to kind of be blunt with the with everyone on the call. I think we've been the real estate industry has been late to the game with reviews. Uh, we didn't quite know how to handle it, um, but we're there now, and we're doing you know we're we're taking reviews. But it's really uh, neat to see the trending. So here's a graph showing what the general public is searching for, and realtor reviews is a is a phrase that people are typing in, and it's trending upward. And it's important for us to acknowledge that and realize that because reviews are so important to the business. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So when we think through reviews, there are so many different uh, you know, sources to have reviews. We're very big proponents of having reviews on your own websites. You know, not trusting third-party sites or the portals to, to just have your reviews there. There's a reason why they're doing them and it's to drive traffic to their websites because they know this is a trending phrase and that when people meet with you um, or the realtors who work within your company that they'll you know, go to Google and they'll search reviews for that person. Um, so there, it's a critical component to their business. And so um, you know, here's a screenshot showing reviews on an agent's website, uh, but we know this from Yelp and, and through Amazon, you know, we as consumers, we use those to read reviews. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Now I know that um, you know all the ladies on this call are you know you all of your companies have um, used reviews extensively, and you guys are even pushing it deeper. Um, you know, but Cindy, can you give us some feedback on what you've seen um, since you guys have been doing reviews? Well, I mean, we get more than 50% of our reviews back. We make a, uh, we've got our, our review system, the Delta Review System, integrated with our corporate survey. So every time a transaction closes, a survey automatically goes out to uh, the buyer or seller, and they have the opportunity to let us know about the transaction. Um, but one of the things that we saw is, that uh, on our own brokerage website, we weren't really, um, we were not really prominently featuring reviews. So when we recently went through a redesign, we made that uh, a feature on the home page right there because it is so important. Um, our, the consumers are using reviews from everything from TVs to toothpaste nowadays. So why should real estate be any different? Yeah, and, and reviews, you know, they're, they're so important, and we don't see this declining at all. As a matter of fact, we see this increasing, and in, you know, that that trend is is going upward. Uh, you know, so there's a, a huge need to collect the reviews on your own uh, web presence. Um, and if and if I could chime in here, because a lot of questions I get is, well, Jonathan, what happens if someone um, gives me a negative review? But there's two ways: you can either moderate or you can just let it pass through. But I think the key here is one: um, the user wants the information, but two, it's not so bad that you get a negative review, it's how you handle it. Because uh, a consumer may look, at, in fact, I've done it on Amazon before, where you're looking at a product that have no, I have no idea who's making this product, you know, four out of five are good, but the one, you know, that was just a personal opinion. It doesn't necessarily mean it was a negative review. So there's nothing wrong with that. And again, um, embrace this because uh, Google is favoring 
those that are, are embracing using reviews and testimonials to get traffic back to their site. Yeah. Uh, let's go ahead and hop to the next slide. Well, the last two things that, that we want to talk through uh, really are, are kind of some hot topics right now within the industry. So um, with these, we'll, 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 we want to talk about chat and we want to talk about uh, social media. And, you know, I think those are two huge uh, communication and engagement tools today um, that are being underutilized. Uh, so if you can hop to the next slide. So, so for chat, um, one thing that we're seeing is that, uh, you know, people, when they use chat, that they're chatting about, so they hop online chat on a real estate website, they're either talking about usually one of three things, either their real estate needs as a, a buyer or seller, and I'd throw into there as a renter as well. Um, another one is career opportunities, believe it or not. And, and a third one is just customer service, um, I hate to use the word issues, but customer service issues. So if they have a question um, and just want it answered that's really a customer service related, they'll do it quickly through chat. And I think this kind of goes back to the real time mentality. I'd rather just ask a question instead of send an email. Um, and if you roll that back, people would rather send an email than, than place a phone call. Uh, so it's just so easy um, you know, to chat with people. And uh, I know that, uh, you know, Cindy, you've been using chat for quite a while now. And um, why don't you share, as we go to the next slide, Cindy, why don't you share what, what you've seen through chat um, over the past year? Well, uh, chat is probably our highest level of uh, lead conversion uh, on the website. Um, we use uh, the Delta chat on our um, residential side, on our commercial site, and also on our recruiting site. Um, and the residential and commercial, we see basically what you were saying, where they're, they're requesting information on real estate needs, uh, customer service, so forth. Um, but the key ingredient um, on converting those type of leads is timeliness. Um, just last week, I saw where we had an agent assigned to one of the Delta chats, and um, they waited till the next morning to contact the, the lead and unfortunately by that time the lead had already uh, signed a lease with another agent. So they, they, can, they lost out. Now uh, with our recruiting site, it's been a phenomenal response. Um, just I, I received an email from our owner, Mark Wolf, this morning uh, just telling me about three more agents that have come into live chat uh, over the course of the last month that are joining the company strictly because of our recruiting website with Delta and the Delta chat feature. Um, we're seeing more and more people wanting that. And uh, for us, it, you know, having something available on the site that can answer the consumer's need from 7 a.m. in the morning to 11 p.m. at night is huge. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, so, hey, Cindy, and, and these leads too, here's what was shocking to me as we were digging deeper and deeper into this is the the level of information that people will provide via chat. I mean, they, Absolutely. they give you everything. You know, so, so these, so when it comes to, um, you know, I guess the general real estate quote unquote leads side of things, I mean, they'll tell you their name, their email address, where they live, you know, how much they're looking to spend. I mean, all their, their phone number, their time frame, I mean, it's all delivered, packaged in chat. You know, here you go. Um, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of a shock, you know, to a lot of people to see how much information is provided, um, you know, you know, through the chat uh, feature, so to speak. Um, if you could go forward, uh, for the sake of time, let's go forward two slides to social. I'm um, going back up one more. There we go. Um, the, the last topic that we wanted to talk through is uh, social media engagement. And I, I think that this is one of those areas um, where at times we don't know how to handle it. And, and we receive the questions all the time uh, from 
from both real estate firms and from sales associates and what should I be doing on chat. And there are a lot of products out there. And I, I, I think the, the one thing that I could you know, mention to everyone is that the approach that we like to take just strategically at a high level um, is providing the tools so that people can use your website. Again, think, think mobile, tablet, and desktop, and think your apps as well that people can use your website and your apps to engage in social media. And, you know, really you have to always be looking at the, at the big ones. So you're looking at Facebook, you're looking at Twitter, um, Pinterest, uh, and Google+. You know, those are the four big ones that we really look at and that we pay attention. I, I know there's all kinds of other channels, but, you know, you hit those four and, you, and you've hit, you know, the, the majority of the channels. And I don't know if you heard the news what was it, maybe about a month ago, about four weeks ago, on a Monday, Facebook did an announcement that they literally had one billion people on their website that day. You know, so again, thinking through numbers, that they had, you know, over 10% of the population on Earth on Facebook. So, so we'll hear the news that, oh, Facebook is declining. Well, you, you know, there's a lot of people on there, and, and we see it used a ton. And, and I think it might help everyone on the call that if, if the three ladies could chime in and, and just share what you're seeing with Facebook. I would love to share about that, Mike. Um, our, you know, for us it's all about providing value to our, our consumers, but also to our agents. And our agents are using tools, they were like Hootsuite and TweetDeck to push out their listings and their information from their websites to social media. And while those are good tools, um, you know, they have to pay for them. And what we're finding is, so far, our agents have been able to, they've used Top Producer and Wise Agent for their contacts, constant contact for their email and drip campaigns. Uh, they pay for their QR codes, and they use Dropbox for file sharing. So they've been able to replace a lot of the tools um, that they normally would use for a lot of their everyday activity, including pushing out to social media, which, as you said, that is so huge. So when we were able to provide them the DeltaNet platform, they could stop all those other things that they were doing in transition and have a one-stop shop, and it saved them a lot of money, um, you know, monthly costs for all those different service vendor service providers. So we're really pleased about that. And um, one example that I, I like to share is, you know, Delta is continuously looking for ways to improve and meet our needs and the agent's needs. And just recently, I believe you all added a one-click checkbox and so that if our agent adds a listing to the MLS, it automatically will push out to their Facebook professional page. And that's huge. That's a time saver. The other things are all money savers. So when we can save our agents time and money because of the Delta Media Group, then you know that's the kind of technology partner that we really want to continue to work with. And we certainly are also experiencing, um, well, we love the ability to be able to share across all multiple platforms. But even more so, we are excited that our consumers are sharing, and they have the ability to share across the multiple platforms. In fact, um, we had a social acquisition session growth of 155% this year. Great. Great. Yeah, and that's, that's huge. And if you look at, and actually the screenshot I have on here, you really can't see it. But here's a listing that was shared. Um, now I know because we, we can dig into it and see it, but this listing was shared 2,000 times on social media you know, by other people. You know, so by provided that goes to what you just said, Susie, by providing, you know, people the ability to even just share via social, um, that goes so much further sometimes than what you could do on your own or what your sales associates could do on their own. Um, you know, that that's a big deal. Um, well, I, I know we're kind of we're running it's what 145 here, and I know we wanted to take some questions. Um, so before we get into probably the last three slides, um, do we want to go ahead and get into questions? Oh, sorry about that. I was on mute. <laughs> but um, yeah, we do have some, some really good questions here. Um, so 
somebody is saying, uh, there's a question that says, uh, how can I track conversions? So, Susie, can you talk a little bit about how Cutler tracks conversions and what you do with leads and, and how you're determining uh, what the efficacy is of your online web, web presence? Uh, certainly, I can tell you that we basically do it manually. Um, we, that is of extreme importance to us. It's so important that we continue to track this manually as we work towards um, integrating with our uh, accounting platform. And, and we are so close uh, with Delta's API to be able to allow that to be an automated process. But for the last uh, I would say six years, we've done it manually. And if anybody wants to reach out to me for details on how we do it, I'll be more than happy to assist them. So in, in your business, do you guys uh, provide all the leads to the listing agent when a lead comes in and then give it a time to live? Or how do, how do you guys sort of manage your lead management? I and mean, like, what are your business rules? Um, for Cutler Real Estate, we our listing um, realtors get their leads. Um, if a consumer requests a realtor, they get that lead as well. If a lead comes in on an IDX property, we take that and broadcast that out to um, approximately 10 or so realtors that are servicing that zip code. And then the first to respond basically owns the lead. And so it's kind of a jump ball? Yeah, it's a jump ball, and you would be surprised that when we integrated that broadcast lead system, all of a sudden those leads, and we we charge a referral fee on those, those leads were being responded to within two minutes where our agents listing leads, mm, they can sit there for days. So they didn't want the free Do you guys lines. ever take the leads back? I mean, when, it, when an agent marks the lead as, like, dead or – unresponsive or whatever, do you take them back and then reallocate them? No, right now we only take them back if the consumer asks us to reassign um, to someone for one reason or another. Uh, we send out a quality assurance email to every customer that uses our, our site and just to ask them if they if everything was okay with the website, if there's anything we can improve upon, and if they were satisfied with the response by the realtor. And then we take that and use that kind of as um, as a tool there on whether or not we should jump in. Cindy, do you guys do things differently in Dallas? Um, well, yeah, a little bit differently. Um, we have ours on an auto uh, processing, so the listing agent automatically gets theirs. We don't take them back. We have a round robin for um, the sending out the IDX leads and so forth, and uh, we don't charge any referral fees ever. That's kind of part of the REMAX deal, right? That's cultural. Kind of. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, Karina, what about you guys in Florida? I mean, you have this blend of people that are relocating to Florida and then the people that are just relocating in the area there. Does that have a, a different ramifications for lead management? It does. We have one uh, lead coordinator at the top who really oversees the whole thing because, again, there are so many, you know, Florida's the melting pot and there's a lot of diversity. And as you said, people are coming here from all over the world. Um, so, and we're a member of the leading real estate, you know, leading RE. So um, the leads are very diverse and we have commercial leads, residential, rental. We even have our business brokerage. So. You know, that said, you have to keep a, a real good eye on all of them coming in, and we do have it automated. It seems consistent that the listing agents get the listing leads, and then we have the e-teams, but they do have to respond within 15 minutes, and if they don't, then it goes on to the next agent. And, um, and we do actually, the ones that are not responded to, um, after they've gone through several agents, they go back to our lead coordinator. And we do keep a list ultimately, and then whoever's you know sitting floor duty will provide that list to them to go back and you know if there's been any you know non-responsive in on either side um, to kind of push those leads back through again and give it another try. So um, this program has really worked well for us, and, and it's a great way to keep 
keep up with everything. It, it integrates with our accounting. It's, it is a little manual right now, as you were saying, for um, us to work in our accounting system. So we're hoping that that part of it will become a little bit more automated for us in the future. Yeah, I've, I've often thought that if, uh, if Zillow were to become a real estate brokerage, they would know the most responsive agents because they, they process so many leads every day that the, right. you know, the people that are sort of paying for leads and that are responding to leads and, uh, you know, in, in many ways they're, they are sort of out brokering the broker in terms of how they manage the online consumer. And, um, you know, I, I mean, you can either feel threatened by that or you can, <laughs> you can believe that it's, uh, it's a great lesson to learn, but it, it, it is certainly fascinating. Um, so I, I want to talk a little bit about, now one of you guys, and I forget which one it is, but you guys are on sort of what I would call V2 of chat, and there's a bunch of questions about chat because uh, in wave group research, we recognize that um, only about 10% of real estate websites today have chat available on their site. And some of you guys have been doing chat for quite a while, and as I mentioned, you're on V2. So who is it that's on sort of the second version of chat? Um, me, Cindy. Yeah. So tell me, I mean, and, and that's kind of, I mean, Remax, the whole model is like independent agents and the brokerage is providing a chat experience and in, in communicating with consumers and then passing them off to a real estate agent. Tell me mm -hmm. some of the, you know, unique lessons you've learned from that. Well, um, the better the script that can scrub the lead definitely uh, qualifies it much better for the agent. Um, and also, what we try to do is make sure that the agents that are receiving the uh, chat leads are floor time agents, so they are immediately, hopefully, contacting the lead. Um, we do see an ROI on that. We do actually track all of our uh, engagement uh, via our transaction platform. So, um, you know, I think last year, looking at my numbers, uh, it was live chat was responsible for 6.3 million in volume. So more than covered your expense of Delta Media. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yes, definitely. So it for us, um, one of the things that we do is it's not exactly a live real estate agent on the chat. It's actually at a call center, they go through, they scrub the lead, and then pass it on into our lead system, and that you know sends it out to our our floor time agents. Excellent. So I think that makes so, it a little easier to not have the responsibility for an agent to be on the call or on the the chat. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit. There are a number of questions about. Um, branding and design and flexibility with the Delta Media system. I mean, clearly, uh, Mike, you guys have an architecture that's used by a variety of brokerages and a variety of business models and things like that. Um, is the Delta Media solution a template solution or could you add your own uh, style sheets to the website and uh, design it the way you want it to look and feel? Um, so yes and yes. Uh, so we do all of that. Um, so we have obviously some templated things, um, you know, that are out of the box, and then we have, you know, I would say templated and customizable, and then all the way to full custom. So it, it's, it's so we do all of the above, and um, you know, and and the ladies on the call could even answer to that because pretty much all all three of them are on full custom, um, you know, designs. And do you find, I mean, just uh, this is kind of a curious thing, you know, the, the consultant that comes out, but, w you know, we're working on uh, the broker public portal right now, which is sort of an MLS consumer facing website for the nation. And one of the things that we run into both at the board level and, in, and individually with people is like, everybody has their own opinion of design. Yeah. And one of the questions I have is that, I mean, do, do custom design sites work more effectively than template sites, or is it just all the same? Is it feature driven, or is it look and feel driven? Um, so, so the blunt answer to that is we've seen um, we've seen people really focus way too much on the design. Now, let me just say this up front, though, too: your design and your brand is very important, and you have to always maintain your brand. You know, that's without question. Uh, but, but we see far too often. Um, that 
both sales associates and real estate firms spend way too much time focusing on how they're going to look and not really looking at the engagement points. Um, obviously, we, we spend a ton of time on that and really understanding how to engage. And so there can be some things, but, but here, everyone on this call right now, you know, they'll ask for things sometimes and we'll say, well, we could do that, here's what would happen, or we could do it this way. And they always, um, there's always a way to find compromise and to do it, to do it well and to get really good conversion. Um, but I will also say this too, you always have to have a decision maker, you know, especially, in, and Victor, I think you're feeling that too, you know, where you, sometimes you just have to, you know, have a decision made and move forward. Well, I guess, you know, one of the things, uh, the common threads that sort of run throughout this webinar today for me is that it's not what your website does for you, it's the way you work your website. Yeah. So, you know, the, the common thread is that these brokerages use their website as a tool and they're actively engaged in it every day. So they, they take every lead that comes in and every correspondence that comes in and every chat message that comes in, they assign it to somebody who's responsible for it and they start working it. You know, much in the same way that if somebody was standing in front of you asking you a question about real estate, you're going to give them an answer. And one of the problems that we see in real estate technology is because that website is that thing that's sort of clicked on and is supposed to do its job, that a lot of times real estate brokerages are remiss at taking control and, and recognizing that the communication they're receiving from a consumer is the same communication that they would receive if they were standing in front of them and they right. treated as such. Well, Give dig dignity and respect to the person who actually put a note in the chat or sent you an email or asked a question. Yeah, absolutely. And the, here, here's what I would say too is you know, what we're seeing, so, so really you know, one of the big problems within the industry is that real estate professionals aren't focusing on their core business. You know, they, they've been stuck too busy having to focus on what could they be doing in all these different areas and how do we integrate it, how do we get, integrate it, not just technology, but into our business. So, so that was you know, why, the, why we launched um, you know, something that we're calling the Fusion Project. And actually, if you could go to the next slide, and you know, to, for us to wrap up is, you know, for us, we saw this problem that real estate professionals, you know, you need to work your business. You need to pay attention to the consumer, um, you know, which, which feeds your business. You know, so how can we help do that? How can we take the chat, you know, so whether it's launching a product or integrating the best of breed that's out there, you know, in all these different areas so that, um, so that you as real estate professionals can, again, focus on the business and, and spend that time on your business that it deserves. And, and Jonathan, you want to, I guess, answer some of that as well? Yeah, so when you look at all the elements we, we talked about today, again, you know, we're trying to prevent any real estate professional from having to go out, or what we're trying to solve is having any professional go out and, and, and having to work with 10 different vendors. What we're trying to do is make this as seamless as possible so that everyone on the call can focus on either building their business or building their team or, or uh, working with more buyers and sellers. So again, we've, we've spent a lot of time building this and a lot of the feedback, we're still soliciting the feedback of what other things we could integrate in this because I, I believe this is a, another game changer for real estate. But I think it starts with the Fusion Project and you know, we do, we invite everyone to be a part of this. Um, the system is built and ready to go. We have, you know, customers on the call today. So if you just move to the next slide as we finish off the call, if, if you do want to be part of this, we've created a site that is um, dedicated just to this project. And uh, we encourage you to, to give us feedback or maybe this is something that you just say, hey, this is, I need to go this direction. Excellent. Well, thank you guys very much. and. Uh, you know, seriously, Susie, Karina, Cindy, I know that you're all raving fans of Delta Media, and I, I think, you know, the, the testimony to that is that, you know, not only are they good people, but they have really solid technology, and they provide outstanding customer service, and at the end of the day, that's what you're looking for in a business partner who's going to deliver technology to you. And, um, you know, I know these guys personally, and I, I've always respected the fact that I can give them a call on their cell phone or whatever and say, hey, I have a problem or I have a concern or 
whatever it is, and you're, you guys are always uh, very responsive. Can you tell us, um, just in closing here, uh, how many employees do you have at Delta Media? And tell us about your serving and your customer support and things like that, and we'll just use that as kind of our wrap session. Well, yeah, so I think the big thing for us is we've actually, it's kind of scary, we've been in this, uh, Delta's been around since 1994, um, which is the infancy of the Internet, and we've served well over 100,000 sales professionals or sales associates across the country. And, um, you know, so, so we've been doing this for a long time, and uh, Jonathan and I have been running Delta, my goodness, how long now? Almost 15 years, over 15 years. Yeah, over, uh, going on 16th year, I think that we've been, uh, we've been running it. Um, so just having fun doing it and um, with a dedicated team, um, you know, right out of Canton, Ohio. So, um, so yeah, so thank you, everyone. Okay, well, thank you all very much. Uh, just to kind of close out this session, I want to let you know that we will be uh, taking the recording of this video. I ask that, uh, that the presenters do not log out of GoToWebinar.